Hello guys, welcome to another video. This is Will Rock here. Um, do a different video here. Um, this is my second attempt at doing this. First attempt video came out really long, so I'm trying to shorten it up best I can. This one. Well, you guys don't know me. I'm gonna say my name again. My name is Will Rock. That's the, my YouTube name. People also know me as Will Rock Network, but my real name is William. Um, I'm here to talk about several things, um, mainly my mental health. Shout out to Holly, Pokemon, Pokemon Master Holly. Um, I'm going to put her link up here somewhere or it'll be down below. A uh, video that she did about her um, mental, mental health and stating her life and her depression, what she has suffered throughout her life and everything. Um, yeah, I'm one of those persons that hit her up after that video, after I saw the video. You know, she miraculously did respond and um she um actually inspired me to do this video so um, i'm gonna do my version so i'm gonna open up talk a little bit about myself about my mental health and my past experience which is similarity to what holly has experienced it's a few things that's different but well, okay, so with that being said, first of all, I am 42 years old. Um, I come from an island of Puerto Rico, um, hometown of Ponce, to be exact. Uh, I've come from a poor family. Um, my parents, um, they're both from Puerto Rico. Um, my parents, they got married young and don't know much about the history but I do but I just you know I'm not gonna go like go into detail on that but what I know is that I'm gonna just tell you that uh, growing up I didn't have the best um upbringing up upbringing up sorry I can't pronounce that word I'm the oldest out of three kids um I got two younger sisters we didn't see how much but we managed like I said poor family um my father used to drink a lot, he used to smoke a lot, always have fights with my mom. So basically that's just the same thing as, as Holly. It's just years back, I didn't have a Game Boy at the time, so I can't, I can't hide underneath the bed. And me being the oldest, I got blamed a lot for a lot of things. So yeah, it was a lot of fights and constantly, my dad is always constantly drinking and smoking. One of the reasons why I don't like to do it myself now, yeah, I'm an adult, it happens once in a blue moon, but not every day like my dad used to do it every single day, every day, every day, non stop. It was like every day he had to do it. I don't know what, what's the thing with Hispanic men, the majority has to be drinking and smoking, like it's, it's a mandatory, it's not, but you know, that's how they see it. So that's that. We, did, we constantly moved a lot. We always on the move, always on the move. We moved a lot throughout the years. So yeah, it was been, it was tough for us coming growing up. It's it was tough for us to be um, to get uh, stabilized in one place. And you know, you know how a lot of people um, are born in one area and are raised in one area practically their whole life. We didn't have that type of privilege. I was never in a school long enough. I was always from school to school, school to school. Moon left and right, and while this is playing, I'm gonna be having some Pokemon game play on the side, which you're probably seeing it right now. Um, I'm gonna have some do some evolutions and some maybe some go battle leaves on the side while you guys watching this. Um, so yeah, we moved a lot, we moved a lot. Um, I did move to the states to um, Long Island. Long Island. Yeah, well, I when I was two years old, I lived there for a little bit for like a year. Then I went back again to my country and moved back here when I was like eight or nine to Jersey. From Jersey, I lived there for a few years, back from town to town, back and forth, back and forth, until finally we moved here to New York, the Bronx, in 1990. From 1990 to 1990, I would say five or six. Yeah. Yeah, 96 is more or less how we lasted there. 
that one place that lasted long enough that I actually started high school but I never finished because they gave me moved again to Jersey so I never finished high school I was supposed to be class 97 and I never finished high school so I never joined the military or anything like that I I um, I have my first I have four kids three daughters let me explain let me just give you that explanation I have three daughters that are my own flesh and blood I have my oldest she's 20 I have Pebbles Kimberly she is 17 I got my youngest she just turned 11 I do have a boy that I raised as my own but biologically it's no, there's no story his name is Ryan he's autistic he is um, 12 Thir I'm, yeah 13 sorry he's just turned 13 so yeah he's just a tough tough boy but yeah he has my heart and I will always love him like my own um that's that I, I've always I have a few things like for me like I've been through so much in my life I'm trying to narrow it down to one video it's just so hard all I know is all I just say is that I have so much that I've been through in life it's like it has affected me mentally emotionally physically I was bullied when I was young when I was growing up, when I was growing up um, in Puerto Rico, the um, kids used to call me names, etc., etc. Um, when I was five years old, I had an accident, which I could show you my car in a second. I had an accident that because of the name calling and the bullying for kids calling me names, whatever, um, I snuck out from my my great great grandma's house, grandma's house, so to go play. The kids were playing stickball across the street and I snuck out from my mom and and they're going over there to play stickball with the kids but they were name calling me they said they didn't want to play with me and they were just name calling me so I ended up going by myself and I had a humongous accident which I'm going to show you right now hopefully you can see it right here see this car if you could see it closely not sure because it's the GoPro right here not as big as I was when I was five years old but 64 stitches about three months in the hospital and yeah all because I was bullied when I was young and because I snuck out I tend to keep to myself I'm very quiet I'm not so much now but when I was growing up I was very quiet I was always a quiet kid in the back of the classroom I was always quiet um, I'm very um, insecure myself. Um, people say I'm negative. Probably that's true. Um, I have a. I don't take rejection. Well, I don't. I um, mean, yeah, because I've been, I've been picked on, I've been humiliated, and I've been pushed away, and I've been rejected my entire life when it comes to relationship, when it comes to jobs, when it comes to anything you know being picked up in school whatever I mean you know bully whatever it's just I don't take rejection well I really don't and that's why I keep to myself I stay quiet I don't even try because I'm afraid of hearing the word no which is like something I constantly hear all the time you know I hear no more more than I even hear yes yes is not, never an option for me it's just always no 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 you know, just to make it funny. If I like a girl, I ask, "Hey, you know, can I get your number?" Our answer is always no. Or you know, or if I want that job, whatever, I apply for it. I don't hear from them. No. Even got emails, emails telling me, "Oh, you overqualified for the position." But basically, that's telling you no. So it's always been like that for me. So I don't take rejection well. I don't. Um, I mean, like I said, I'm insecure on myself. Um, a lot of things a lot of things that I've been through in my life for uh, 40 years so it's a lot of headaches a lot of stuff I'm trying to say as much as I can as fast as I can but um, now as the fact talk about committed suicide um, I have done it I have attempted it myself several times no I never I never held the gun in my hand never had one before so if I did I don't think I'll be here right now if I did but um I don't take pain as well easily because of this scar on my leg 
I was traumatized with that and I don't like pain, I don't like needles, I don't like anything puncturing me. So yeah, I just, you know, I tried it when I was, you know, younger years ago, taking pills, dr drinking cloth or whatever. Uh, but I just wake up the next day like nothing, you know. I've been through a lot of problems with relationships. Um, I kept looking for family. You know, I got married young, I got married at 18, you know, I met my first fairy mother in high school, and so yeah, I got married in high school, and um, like in 94, got married in 97, I had my first daughter, my oldest daughter in 2000, so yeah, that was pretty much it, and you know, she went and cheated me, and she left me for another. Second one, the same thing. I look uh, after a while. I met another one, and, and which is the mother of Kimberly Pebbles, and we didn't last long. We last like about maybe like a year together. Same thing. Left me for someone else, and she's still with the guy after all these years. You know, right? Good for her after all these years. But I'm, I'm at peace with every with all that. By the way, just just look on the record. Just expressing myself on my past. But I have met, I have made peace with all my exes or my baby mothers and so yeah looking for family whatever and that was happens my third baby mother which is the mother of my youngest years later um same thing you know i met her she was already i'm pregnant and the mother of the my, the boy of the sixth son and because she was it was a boy i stood with her and whatever I took care of it took the responsibility and, and Long story short, years later, same thing happens, leads me to someone else, you know, etc, etc. So all those relationships has really, like, impacted me. Like, not only here, but here, you know, it's like telling me, why can I, why it's wrong with me that they all leave me for someone else? I mean, what is it? What is it that they have that I don't have? Obviously, and I'm going to say it, what it is, I'm going to put it right here, is this. I made that in tips today, by the way. Um, so yeah, it's like, that's what it is. I have a lot of financial problems, as far as I can know. I mean, my family, like I said, my family's never not poor. Um, I didn't finish high school, so that doesn't help me either. I did finish it. I did finish it in 2017, but I, that was like a long story. Let me say it, um, I spent 20 years Working from place to place at 18, I started working full time. I got myself full time jobs. Just been working from here to here, 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 there, whatever. Basically, that's how it is. I moved out of my parents' house when I was 18. Got married, you know, and it's just been on my own ever since, you know, from one thing after another. I never got a chance to really go back to school here in New York. You have to be going, moving, moving here and there, working here, working there. You know, you, now it's expensive. Back then, it wasn't as much, but you and yourself. It's just hard, you know, it's been hard, now it's even tougher, and that's pretty much it, I mean, it's just one bad thing after another, I don't get a break at all, one relationship, one bad relationship after another, I don't get a break at all, I s I'm basically, I feel like I sit here just to witness, witness, witness all my exes live up and do something for themselves, and have a happier life. See everybody, all of my ex, all my ex, um, best friends from school, whatever school, school buddies or whatever, and have a better life. I'm just here to witness everyone else live their life while I'm still here, stuck here in limbo. Like, when it's gonna be my turn? You know, I, it's, I don't see it that way. I did this YouTube channel as a hobby. Um, I was in, I was inspired by Nick. Um, Trainer tips mm. back when Pokemon Go first came out. Actually, as you follow, I used to follow Ali A. He was the first one I used to follow when Pokemon Go first came out. And then, because I play a lot of Call of Duty and he does a lot of Call of Duty games and you know, showing new maps, but I was soon then start watching his Pokemon Go videos. And then from that, watching that was um, the, the YouTube algorithm, whatever. Sh excuse me, show me um, next, and I started watching next videos, and that's where I met everybody else. and through that and it's just been awesome 
um, I was like, you know, I could do this too. So I started doing it myself from Puerto Rico, and I started playing Pokemon Go from Puerto Rico all the time. I don't stack like, a long story. It's just I've been on the move. As like I said, I've been moving a lot. In every relationship, every breakup, I end up leaving, moving somewhere else, whatever. Like from my second, baby, second, and my third, I was in Puerto Rico for a little while. Came back, and then I met my third, and then together for eight years, and then I moved again. In 2012, I was there for five years. And I moved back here now after Hurricane Maria. So yeah, I, I've experienced Hurricane Maria. I experienced Hurricane Hugo. I <laughs> I've been through three failed marriages. Four. Counting the one I'm, I was in Puerto Rico with. Um, I've had countless jobs. Um, have countless cars. It's like nothing ever works for me, and you know, and I started doing this YouTube. I started seeing people recognizing me, you know, like uh, showing me support, whatever, you know. And it kind of gave me something to look forward to, and you know, maybe I thought like, maybe I could, maybe I could do this, you know, maybe I could actually pull this off, you know, actually, you know. What I really want is just recognition. It's so much, so much failed attempts at anything, everything else, and so much no 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 from everything else to finally get something that tells me yes i you know i ran to that i pushed for that and i started doing it i did my best with what little bit i have you know and then hurricane hit maria hit i was living with someone over there i was okay i had a good life i was I had a decent life i was happy um i had a job I had a nice home i did I had a nice wife stepdaughter Hurricane Maria hit, and I took a risk coming back to coming back to New York. But because we had lost both lost our jobs, the home got damaged. Um, it wasn't that big of a hit for us, but the fact that we had no jobs, it was a hit. So I decided to come back to New York. I came back to New York, and it's been all downhill since I've been here for over two years, and. It's just been one struggle after another. Came here with four hundred dollars in my pocket. Almost, yeah, four, five hundred. But about, about almost five hundred dollars in my pocket. I had no place to go, no place to stay. I packed my bags. I told my wife, "I'll be back. I'm gonna get a job. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send for you." And I was very positive, convinced that it was gonna happen. Not to mention, I just started my YouTube channel and um, I was hyped of coming to New York and meeting people, which I know eventually was going to happen, and I did. That's the only good part of this trip that I actually came here and I met the New York community. I have met so many people through the game, through the Pokemon Go community. I've met uh, Trainer Tips, which is he's my inspiration why I started doing this. I made Trainer Trips, I met Reverse, I met, I, met, I met Pokemon Master Holly, I met Solar Two Dots, I met. I met Pokemon Poke Girl 7, um, I met uh, who else? Sparky Joy, JT Valor, the crews I met him one time, the, um, Dark Mortal Wolf. Who else haven't I met? I met so many people, so many trainers, so many YouTubers out there. It's just amazing. I've been to Chicago twice. I'm scared to go to Philadelphia if it's, if this CV doesn't cancel it. But yeah, I'm, I'm like, wow, it's been an amazing. That's the only good part about it. The bad part is my YouTube channel really ain't making a profit, so you know I'm gonna put it up here somewhere. You can see my my um, my watch time view, whatever. I don't watch it. I don't like no one really watches my stuff, so it it does like makes me feel down, like you know, like you nobody know, cares, whatever. So you know, me, me coming from up from that negativity, you know, that lifestyle is like now seeing this, like I think the only thing that actually was working for me now it isn't. So you know, it's like. You know, it makes me like not feel like doing this anymore. And I've been a few times close to close enough to to quit. But the people I know from here, I'm just a hero, Panda Man, um, uh, Miss Mime 100, and all the uh, um, dead guy plays. All these guys that I've met here and, and here from New York and whatever, they just tell me keep going, whatever, and you know, don't quit. 
they inspire me and and every time we go out for meet up for community days or whatever or, or for raid days or whatever it's just you have some I have so much fun with that I like I like that I like that the environment I like that the hype I like interacting and that gives me you know I could have the worst shittiest day ever and I've had I've had, had some shittiest day and I come hang out with it and it just goes away and even if it's just for a few hours it just goes away and it makes me feel good and that's why I, I, I look forward to the next meetup because it helps me it does help me um, I used to play PlayStation online but ever since I moved from Puerto Rico over here two years ago my TV which is right behind this camera has been I bought this TV last year it's been off it doesn't turn on because I can't turn it on um, I have no way of watching it I, I have a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 3 but I can't really do anything with it I can't stream from it I have no home I have no home internet so I cannot stream I cannot even um, watch Netflix or watch Voodoo or watch Hulu or watch anything like I used to do so it's just here oh, whenever I get hotspot on my phone then I turn it on and then it's up and then there's updates that take months for me to do so yeah it's, it's a struggle I can't even afford home internet which is pathetic you know I'm supposed to be a YouTuber and I don't even have home internet which is it's just excuse me it's just I feel like I'm not good at anything I try so hard it's just I feel like I'm not good at anything no matter what I do everything's a failure for me everything everything everything's a failure for me everything that's just not just me this is a family thing my my sisters too my mom and like it's always been like that it's like we don't progress in life no matter what we do I'm 42 years old I've I've lived almost half of my life or even more because I don't even know how or how, or how long I'm gonna be around you know especially with this virus going around you know how um, it's just I don't even know anymore I try so hard to do something good with myself but it's just life I feel like life doesn't let me like it keeps slapping me in the face with reality you're not going where you think you're doing that's how that's how I feel is talking to me where are you going where you think you're going you're not going anywhere so yeah that's how I feel it's just how I feel and last year I had a horrible year um, I have never been with someone you know connecting with someone um, I don't know if you um, you've seen my video library I have this thing called tri a tribute and um, this picture right here this girl right here if you guys don't know her story, those who you, those who know her story, they already know. But those who don't know, that's a special woman that I met briefly. Um, November of 2018. Yeah, I met her in November 2018. I spent like I went, I went to Puerto Rico for like a month and a half. I was supposed to stay, go back and stay, but. I did get my job back. I was trying to work things out with my ex-wife. She didn't want nothing to do with me, so that didn't help. The job I went back to, they get it, and then all of a sudden it just crashed and burned. They closed down, so I was out of job again. I don't like to depend on people. I don't like to stay in nobody's house because I've gotten that before, that I stay in people's houses and they kick me out. Whether it could be friends, best friends, it could be a friend, it could be a family. It could be a place I rent, it don't matter. I, at the end of the day, I always get kicked out. And I, I'm quiet, I'm quiet, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't even, I keep to myself. I don't like to bother, but yet, I, to the end, at the end of the day, it's all about money. They kick me out, even if I'm paying rent. So I've been to places I've been paying rent, and they still, they tell me, oh, you gotta go because I need the room, and I'm paying rent. It has happened to me, so I don't like to defend nobody. So when the place closed down, I was like, I need to come back to New York because I don't have a job over there. So I was working on the books. I can't work on the books because of the past I have, where my my last baby mother um, put me on child support while living together, and that's a long story. So it kind of built up to a lot of money. 
and I did one Kikora, I did Friday, and she made me a letter when I came back, try to fix things up, but it's supposedly they had canceled it, but then when I started working, they increased the payments to $324 every two weeks, and it's no, it plus all the taxes and fees, and they have state, federal, and all that stuff. I can't, it's, they're gonna be taking all that, I'm not gonna have anything, man, I need to, I live by myself, I need to paint this roof, I need to eat, what am I supposed to do, you know, the, no one else is care, the government doesn't care, no one kills her, so I gotta take care of myself, so I've been doing Uber Eats, Postmates, Caviar, all on foot, I had a bike, that um, Alec, Alec, friend Alec, gave me a bike, and he actually gave me the phone, this phone, that work, which I need a new one, by the way, and last July, July 5th to be exact, I was doing a delivery, came back home, Locked the bike right in front of my house. Just in case I get another, because I get a doom from here, I just turn it off from here. If I get one, I just go out. Then the summer was really bad for me. I wasn't really getting much. So, from between trips, I just come home, sit here, and wait. It's, and since I live in a basement, bringing the bike, the entrance is very stretched and narrow. Bringing it up, like, up and down there, it's just a hassle. So, I just leave it outside, just tie it up. So, I was outside. It was already 10 o'clock. And I'm like, let me wait, I need, I need to do one more. Came inside, went to the bathroom. I got the, I got the hit when I went upstairs, the bike was gone. So, I'm not gonna buy no more bikes. I have one here, my, my daughter, Kimberly, gave me, but I don't use it because I can't breathe. I have a lot of problems with my nose. If you hit me all the time, black, you see me going like that. Uh, that's probably the allergies. It's from the wind, the, the cold. I never had that before, but yeah. I also have problems breathing as well. Um, I get like, uh, how you say, uh, I don't know how to say it. Like, like when you run for a long time and you can't breathe. But I can't, I, ju I just, like, I know in Spanish you say, I hit out. I don't know how you say it in English. I forget, forget. I can't think of the word right now. But yeah, I get that. I can't. You know, I feel like my chest is not coming out. I can't, can't, I can't do that anymore. Um, as well, I'm, I'm suffering from stomach as well and intestines. I'm having problems, I have like, problems with the uh, digestion. My digestive system, I did get checked out, but I haven't got the results. And I think, I'm not a doctor, but I think it was the attempts that I tried to do to myself years ago with my life. And it's now affecting me now, physically. And yeah. Same thing my teeth, I miss any notice, I'm missing a few teeth, if you guys ever notice. That's also the same thing, I never took care of myself, I care less. Because I'm a proper person, I do suffer from depression, like I said, I suffer from depression, anxiety. But when it hits me, the depression, I just, I shut down, I don't care about anything. Don't care about eating, don't care about sleeping, I don't care about going to work, I don't care about anything. Nothing, nothing. I, I have, I get so angry and so locked up, I don't care. About anything and lately I've been every day I cry I don't show it you might not see it now here but every day I cry there's not one day I don't cry especially for her it's not one day I cry I was trying I was talking about her. I just jumped jumped the gun um, every day I cry not only because I lost her but everything I've been through my life and everything it's just everything I can't sleep at night then if I sleep, I have nightmares. It's just a lot, a lot of crap, a lot of crap, you know. The fact that I have to pay my rent, sometimes I don't have the money. Like during the summer, I was struggling hard, and I think a lot of people who actually donated, actually, actually, you know, it took a lot of me to actually go online and, and ask people, and I've done it a few times, and it is, I have, I feel ashamed, but I had no choice. I was desperate, you know. I, you know, not for them, I probably won't even be here right now, which is, I'm thankful, you know, for that. Uh, going back to this, for, um, I met her, and we just talking, whatever. I had a nice time with her when I was in Puerto Rico, we met a few times. The story's there, link is there, you can see the whole story, how it is. But, um, she gave birth, she gave birth, I wasn't there, I decided to come back to New York. And um, she wanted to be with me. I didn't want to because I was afraid. Because I kind of the same same 
situation. I already had experienced it already with my third grade mother. The fact that she was pregnant, she was five months pregnant when I met her with someone else's child. I didn't want to do that again. I didn't want to go through that again. I was already psychologically not in there already because I already been through all that already. So I was like, I don't want to deal with that. I just don't want to be involved with anyone. You know, I just wanted to come from someone to talk to, someone to hang out with, you know, spend time with, etc., etc. You know, so I came back, told her I have a life here in New York. I gotta come back, my kids are here, etc., etc. She wanted me to stay, I did not. I told her no because I had to come back. But the thought was there. Came back, we kept communications, etc., etc. Long story short, March comes, March 5th to be exact. The last time I talked to her, I think it was March 4th, and we were like, I was really feeling very depressed. She was my shoulder. She was my shoulder. I cried every time like, I felt depressed. I texted her call or whatever. And um, I was angry because I was going through some situation. I was angry and I told her that um, I can never be happy. I'm always suffering. I never get I never get no no happiness at all. And I told her that watch that that the moment I finally find someone to be with and I'm probably gonna be happy that's the day that I'm gonna die I'm never gonna enjoy it enjoy it and that was my last words to her the next day she passed away um, she died of uh, complications after birth she had a c-section and nine days later she died she lost oxygen to her brain according to what I heard she was home alone her mom had just gotten there and as soon as her mom walked the door she was able to get up and tell her mom, mom help me and last, last and her eyes rolled up and she hit the floor and she was dead. So but she was alone, so I don't know how long was she even in pain or whatever, what happened. Her last post on Facebook was that morning at 8.30 something in the morning. She put like a, video, a YouTube video link up and the night before I just talked to her. We had like slight little argument or whatever and you know, I feel responsible because for her death because I wasn't there for her. I wasn't there like she wanted, she wanted me to. And I carry that every day. That's why I make mean, I cry. I carry that every day with me that I wasn't there for her because I was thinking about myself instead of thinking about what could have happened. And that's why I keep this and I've been to her grave and I'm planning to go now. CV virus or not. Quarantine or not. I am getting on a plane, even if I have to walk, which is not possible from here to Puerto Rico. And even have to walk to Florida and take a jet ski from Florida to Puerto Rico, I am going back to visit her grave. Mark my words. Anyway, so yeah, um, I had a really tough time growing up. I have a tough time as a dog. I'm 42 years old. I still haven't achieved anything in life. Um, I did get my high school diploma in 2017, but because of the Hurricane Maria and every, all the outcomes that has happened after that, I haven't had a chance to go back to school to further my career. I really wanted something to fill me. And Puerto Rico didn't really have anything like that in my town. I had to go up, up north for that and be away from the family and be on my own up there, but the hurricane hit and I couldn't have a chance to do it. so. And I've been working ever since, so I haven't had a chance to really do it. What I would like to do, yeah, I would like to do it, but it's hard for me. I'm by myself. I'm on my own right now. I'm right now. We have this war, world epidemic that is going on now. They're recommending people to box themselves, stay home, blah blah blah, blah, blah etc. etc. You guys know the drill. But I go, I, I open the door, so I say, I see New York. Typical New York, people walking down the streets, people taking the train, people work, people are, stores are open. This is like normal New York here. So I'm turning on my Uber. I am getting hits and I am working. I don't have a choice. Um, I'm, I'm my own. So I buy my food every day. I buy takeout every day. So I have no choice. Until this stops working, I'm not gonna stop working. So I'm not, I'm just keep on, keep on going. But um, yeah, I've just been through a lot myself. And it's just, I'm trying my best here to talk on the camera. I'm just talking as I go. I didn't really have anything planned I written out. I was hoping this video is short, which I probably it isn't. And I appreciate you guys sticking around to watch it. 
And I, I thank Holly for actually reaching out, uh, answering me, replying to me, actually advising me to say my story. And although this ain't the full story, because believe me, the first video I did was an hour and 42 minutes long. Now, I was not gonna put that out. Besides, it wasn't the other camera, it came over very blurry. So, I just did a new one. Okay guys, so, that's pretty much it. If you guys are interested to hear, hear me more, just let me know. I may do another part, but there's been a lot of stuff. There's been a lot of, a lot of things. So just more or less summarize what I've been through about bad childhood, growing up, our parents always fighting, dad was always drinking, constantly moving around, bad relationship from one relationship after another, after another, after another. They all cheat on me. Um, jobs, the same thing. Uh, one job after another, getting laid off. I was a manager I, one time at two, two different stores, a women's department store, and then getting replaced like nothing, just thrown out or whatever. And then from there, it's been downhill from then ever since. I'm going through Hurricane Maria, that experience. I didn't go through earthquakes, you know, I've been, I was here, but you know, if I would have been in Puerto Rico, I would definitely experience that too. So it's just been one bad thing after another after another after another after another without a break and it's just i know you guys saying this ain't enough for you to be thinking about suicidal stuff but um when it's constantly when it's every day when it's every year and it's all the time no matter what it is being bullied being being bullied being rejected whatever whatever being pushed away being it comes to a time that you say, you know what, enough is enough. And I'm right now, I'm in a point that is enough. I'm tired. I'm not saying that I'm thinking about it. Last year, I did thought about it. I did. I'm not going to lie. I did thought about it. Especially after this happened, I did thought about it. I got low enough, and I didn't think about it. But I didn't do nothing about it. I just thought about it. I didn't do nothing about it. Because I knew... Then no matter what I did, I was gonna wake wait, I was gonna wake wake up again. Like nothing happened. So I did not. I just been here living one day at a time, struggling one day at a time, hoping tomorrow we be better and it hasn't. Work wise right now it's been okay, but look what happening now with the world crisis, it might get slowed down and I may go back again, back down again, just like everyone else is going through right now. I'm still hoping that my YouTube will pick up because if at least I could get my channel monetized, even if it's just a little bit, even if I get a few something out of it, you know, that will help me at least to at least buy me something to eat and like you know something. But until then, I can only pray and hope. So okay, guys, I appreciate your support. I appreciate you guys staying alive. Watching the whole video. Hope you enjoy the evolutions and and the battle that you saw here in the year. And I see you guys. Obviously, Korean Day is has been postponed, has been canceled. So I see you guys at the next time. Peace.